Introducing Theodoro Nguema Obiang alias Teddy Theodore, or some people might just choose to call him the Instagram Playboy. Equatorial Guinea's vice president, or in some cases the first son of the president of Equatorial Guinea. Yep, you heard that right. And the country is still not called a monarchy. Born 25th June 1968 to Teodoro Obiang, the imperious president of Equatorial Guinea, and his first wife, Constancia Mange. Nguema was barely nine years old when his father seized power from his granduncle, Makais Nguema, through a bloody coup in 1979. In the 1980s, he was enrolled at the prestigious École des Roches in Normandy a French private school known for educating the children of various leaders around the world. He then registered to attend Pepperdine University in Malibu, California for a four-term non-degree program in English as a second language. It was then that his propensity for lavish living was revealed. He lived at Beverly Wilshire Hotel and rarely attended class. He was prompted to drop out of school after a mere five months by the administrators. In 1997, Nyema was just a little over 30 years old when his father appointed him Minister of Forests and Agriculture in his sub-Saharan motherland. For a wholesome 15 years, Nyema occupied this post and was called the godfather of the lucrative timber trade. As one would expect, old habits die hard. To live as lavishly as he wished, he needed a lot of money which his salary of 3,200 euros a month could not cover. On 21st May 2012, Nyema was promoted to second vice prime minister alongside former prime minister Ignacio Milam Tang, who was designated as first vice president. Not a month afterward, on the 11th of June 2012, Nyema's corruption and inadmissible actions performed while he served as Minister of Forestry and Agriculture started to come to light when the United States Department of Justice filed an amended complaint against Nyema, which stated that he spent $315 million on properties and luxury goods between 2004 and 2011. According to the foreign complaint, he had levied personal taxes against local and foreign timber companies for licenses to operate and export timber. Such included a $28.80 tax for every log exported. His expenditures were inconsistent with both his known salary of less than $100,000 per year and the income he purportedly generated from his hip-hop music record label. TNO Entertainment. In 2014, the U.S. Department of Justice indicated that Nwema, the then second vice president of Equatorial Guinea, amassed assets worth 300 million U.S. dollars. These included Michael Jackson's memorabilia, including diamond-covered gloves and socks, luxury cars, a mansion in Malibu, and a private jet. Nevertheless, the settlement agreement signed with him only required him to relinquish 30 million US dollars. 20 million dollars of the proceeds was pledged on the United States Department of Justice website to go to a charitable institution for the benefit of the people of Equatorial Guinea. Another $10.3 million was pledged to be used for the benefit of the people of Equatorial Guinea to the extent permitted by law. Since both of these pledges, there have been no records of the funds sent to any of the citizens nor any of the infrastructure of Equatorial Guinea. On the 22nd of June 2016, after serving four years as second vice president, Nguama was promoted to the post of first vice president, as if to reward him for his corruption and embezzlement while remaining in charge of defense and security. This followed his father's re-election in the April 2016 presidential election, where he had gathered more than 90% of the votes. As per the constitution, Nguema would then be able to succeed his father upon his resignation. Talk about creating a modern day monarchical system. You're probably thinking it couldn't get worse, but it does. 
in France, Nguema was found guilty in an absentia trial in 2017 following an investigation that began in February 2012. A Parisian mansion belonging to Nguema was raided by French police and they discovered luxury goods inside worth millions of euros. In July 2012, an arrest warrant was issued for him and the mansion was seized by French authorities in August 2012. He was indicted by the French justice on several counts of corruption, money laundering, and other corrupt practices with a suspended three-year jail sentence and a 35 million US dollar fine. During the process, assets worth 174 million euros were seized from him, amongst which were multiple luxury cars. During the trial, more details were revealed on his lavish spending, a 587,000 euro bill over a five-year period at the Crillon Hotel, spending of 18.3 million euros in two days at Christie's auction house, along with buying Cartier, Piaget and Vacheron watches for more than 700,000 euros. Officials found more than 60 pairs of handmade luxury brand shoes at his mansion on the exclusive Avenue Faux in the affluent 16th arrondissement of Paris. Gemma paid 25 million euros for the 4,500 square meter property. This mansion of more than 100 D1 rooms included a private nightclub, a Turkish bath, a hair salon probably to keep his hair sleeker back in that 90s hairstyle, two gyms, a nightclub and a movie theater. Nguema tried using his appointment as vice president to argue at the International Court of Justice in The Hague that he had diplomatic immunity and could not be prosecuted in France. On 18th October 2016, Swiss prosecutors opened an investigation on Nguema after he landed eight times in Geneva. French authorities had asked them for judicial assistance. And so, in 2017, in the money laundering and mismanagement of public funds investigation, a Swiss court ordered the seizing of a 120 million US dollar worth yacht. The Swiss court settled with Nguema, allowing him to recover the yacht in exchange for more than 25 luxury cars that were publicly auctioned in Geneva on the 27th of September 2019, raising more than 27 million US dollars. They included a Lamborghini Veneno Roadster, one of only nine such versions produced that had been driven only 201 miles, and a Ferrari featuring Formula One and GT inspiration. The story still doesn't end there. On 14th of September 2018, Nguema flew on an official plane to Brazil with nine other passengers and had some of their 19 bags searched by the Brazilian border, police at Viracopos Campinas International Airport. They found approximately 1.4 million US dollars in cash, very fishy indeed, and 20 watches with an estimated value of 16 million US dollars. Nguema did not declare to customs that he was transporting luxury goods and money in cash, which required clearance from the Brazilian Customs Service. Nguema was further asked to pay a fine of 88,000 US dollars for illegal works when renovating his then recently purchased penthouse apartment in Sao Paulo. How much the penthouse was valued is not publicly known. In 2019, a South African judge ordered the auction of Nguema's assets worth 2.2 million US dollars. Daniel Wellman Jans van Rensburg, the businessman had accused Nguema of wrongful detention, human rights abuses, torture and inhumane and degrading treatment that he suffered while he was detained without trial for a long period of time after a business deal went wrong in Malabo. The claim was of 75 million rands, which is $5 million, and his luxury apartment was seized due to this claim. Guess the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Nguema's father had also once done something similar, although he was smart enough to indict the other victim for fraud. On 19 January 2013, Nguema's father, Teodoro Obiang, arrested Roberto Berardi, an Italian building contractor, active for 20 years in Africa. After working in Cameroon, Berardi had formed a construction company with Obiang, 
but discovered some strange operations on the current account and made the arrogant choice to ask for an explanation. A bad decision, if I ever saw one. A few hours later, the Italian contractor was arrested on charges of fraud and embezzlement. Berardi was fined 1.2 million euros and jailed. Unfortunately, no charges were brought from Italy against Obiang. Berardi was released on 14th of July 2015 after more than two years of detention, including 18 months in solitary confinement. All in all, more than 700 million US dollars worth of assets were siphoned out of Equatorial Guinea by the vice president of the country to acquire luxury goods, expensive cars and mansions, while 70% of the citizens of Equatorial Guinea live in poverty. $700 million represents a third of the annual budget of Equatorial Guinea for 2017 and could fund the education system of the country for close to eight years or could fund almost an entire decade of the national health budget. No wonder Equatorial Guinea is so rich and yet its people are so poor. No wonder the life expectancy in this rich African country is 62 years for women and 58 years for men. It is no wonder that 76 out of a thousand children die as infants. Only 53% of children receive vaccines against diphtheria, pertussis, and tetanus in 2021. Only one in four children received a vaccine against polio and measles in 2021 and only 63% of Equatorial Guinea as children were enrolled in primary schools, where only one out of four such schools have access to clean and drinkable water. No wonder is it still that only 15% of Equator Guineans eventually get into university. It is not so far-fetched to attribute all these economic failures in the country's system to the corruption, embezzlement, and lack of care of their leaders. One can only hope for better in the future.